In the west of Europe, there is a country where wildlife can still be found roaming free. It occupies the entire land, following the pace of nature and abiding by the laws of survival. The diversity of habitats that exist here makes this territory a unique location for the animals and plants that have chosen to live here. Its geographical position, facing the Atlantic Ocean and creating a bridge between Europe and Africa, makes Portugal a safe haven for thousands of migratory birds. There are still wild forests, rough landscapes, estuaries, rivers and steppes where wild animals roam, fighting extinction. The cork oak landscape's rare and unique habitats are the iconic representation of a country that is fighting against itself to save its wonderful biodiversity. Portugal's immense coastline of about 940 kilometers in length on the continent and the distant and magnificent Atlantic islands of the Azores and Madeira is the scenery for the age-old encounter of land and ocean where primitive beings still roam free. With a maritime area of more than one and a half million square kilometers Portugal certainly holds its share of European marine wildlife. To discover this land is to re-encounter our most authentic self. To approach our natural and original environments. And to discover a country we didn't know existed. A journey through the legacy of a country where wildlife stubbornly refuses to disappear. The land of Portugal. The leaves cover the forest with the colors of the season. The creatures that inhabit the mountains of Pineda and Jerez have endured yet another freezing night and are now enjoying the first rays of sun. With around 700 square kilometers, these mountains form the only national park in Portugal and its wildlife is amongst the most rich and diverse in the country. After dawn, the temperatures rise and the mist slowly vanishes from the forest. The restless red squirrels are already fully active. They search and store as much food as they could find, provided mainly by the oak trees, in a symbiotic relationship that is as old as it is valuable. But the same forest that provides food and a home is not an entirely safe place. Danger is always alert. The tawny owl is a flawless hunter and it scans the forest with its perfect sight, searching for prey through the darker hours. And it is one of the most secretive owls in Portugal. It is a territorial animal and will often choose the same spot to sleep during the day. If it feels undisturbed, it will stay here all day long. 
the geological forces that around 300 million years ago joined the Iberian Peninsula with the European continents forged the altitudes of the park. The high peaks of the Jerez retain great volumes of the water carried by the winds that come from the ocean, generating high levels of humidity, which forms perfect conditions for small creeks and puddles to appear, ideal for many smaller life forms. Ever discreet, the fire salamander rarely reveals herself and her amazing colors, as do the imposing frogs that dwell under the wet leaves of the early hours. The wilderness finds perfect conditions to grow in the painted forest of the Jerez. Traveling to the east towards inland, we find another wild patch of mountain. Like the Jerez, the Montezillo sits on the northern highlands of the country. A male red deer is the largest of the wild animals of the Montezillo, and in the rut, their cry is heard across the mountain, where others are busy preparing for the long day ahead. The Montezillo is a rough landscape and animals strive to survive in the harsh conditions here. It is here one can find one of the most mystical creatures of the European fauna. The roe deer, ever shy, has inspired forest legends for ages. It is always alert there is still an omnipresent danger in these forests. The greatest predator of Iberia, once widespread over the entire country, now lives hidden in the northern part of Portugal. The wolf was once the main stabilizing force of the great herbivore herds of these mountains, contributing for the balance of the ecosystem. Over the centuries, it has been furiously chased by man and it is now reduced to small wolf packs. Their total number in Portugal is about 300. And with this small population, the future of the species is now seriously compromised. Travelling farther south, we arrive at the very top of continental Portugal. The Serra de Estrela is the highest peak in the entire land, and it contains the largest of its natural parks. The ever-present song of the mountain birds right at the very top can be heard from a distance. The pine and oak woods can only go so high, and the top of the mountain is a naked landscape of snow and granite. Despite the aridity, mountains are a very important biotope, as they serve as huge reservoirs of one of the most important elements on planet Earth. Fresh water. Gravity, omnipresent, will carry the lifeblood of countless habitats diligently on a long journey all the way to the sea. The wilderness, in all its forms and shapes that lives on the banks of streams and rivers, will share the gifts that come from the rising of the temperatures. The season of love has arrived.
At lower altitudes, the streams come together and the riverbeds become wider and stronger. Now, far from the spring, all kinds of animals come to drink from the banks. Water attracts all animals of an ecosystem. Some live inside the water, others outside, and others are forever divided between these two worlds. Riverside habitats support a great diversity of smaller animals, which in turn form the basis of the food chain for many others. It's in shallow and calm waters like these that thousands of insects deposit their eggs and fish, amphibians, reptiles and birds all come to feed on them. They are also the home of primitive animals as old as dinosaurs who follow the rhythms of the sun in an ancient routine. The laws of nature aren't written down. They exist in the behavior of animals and plants, on the fish that insist on migrating upstream to lay their eggs where they were born, and also on their predators who insist on interrupting that same journey. The fittest hunter of Portugal's rivers and streams is an elusive and friendly creature. Not for its prey, perhaps. The otter. Intelligent and skillful, it hunts in shallow rivers and streams where it can easily trap the fish. All over Europe, the otters are more and more in danger. But they seem to have found a safer haven in Portugal, where they have managed to survive and have a stable community. Rivers are resilient forces. They can flatten great areas and transform the landscape beyond recognition. Even a small river, contained in a small granite valley, is capable of the most amazing of transformations. Through the millennia, the river Tua has been sculpting a precious habitat for wildlife. The small puddles of water that form near the banks are the set of dramatic scenes of the struggle for survival. These small fish are about to play their last role in the wilderness. The Tua Canyon hides many dangers. There is a relentless fissure in this river the kingfisher. This small bird spends its day watching the surface of the water from perch to perch, waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike. It waits, completely still, just up to the moment when it shoots straight as an arrow towards the fish, who have no chance of escaping the attack. The kingfisher is a flawless agent of natural selection and it plays its part with distinction. Unfortunately, this age-old encounter of predator and prey won't happen here again. The river Tua soon will be submerged. A great hydroelectric dam is being built in its mouth and all these riverside habitats will be underwater, destroyed forever.
we are now in the most iconic landscape of Portugal. It lies here, serene, magnificent, unique. The cork oak forests, whether in hills or plains, are synonymous of life and protection of biodiversity and resilience. From the tiniest to the largest, all find here their own place, their own pace, which not even humans have the heart to destroy. The most characteristic biotope of Portugal only exists in the Mediterranean region of the globe, southern Europe and northern Africa, and Portugal has the greatest share of cork oak landscape of the world. The way man has been exploring these areas is highly sustainable and it mostly respects the natural rhythms of this ecosystem, setting an example on how mankind can explore nature without harming it. It exists mainly in the south of Portugal and the Alentejo contains the largest area of cork oak forests. With vast areas of wilderness, there are all kinds of animals wandering the landscape freely in Portugal's greatest treasure, the Montado. All the wildlife of the Montado exists in perfect harmony with the most important tree of the Alentejo, the cork oak. The cork, the thick skin that covers the trunk and the branches of the tree, is a defense against forest fires, and it turns the trees highly resistant to flames and heat. Cork is a valuable resource, but it can only be harvested every nine years. Wild animals have thus great areas and time to roam free, mostly undisturbed, and the great wild herbivores of Europe find the space they need right here. Deer have lived here for thousands of years and are now thriving again in the Montado. The females walk the landscape in small family groups. They are very social, sharing this magnificent habitat with many other creatures and always followed by the big stags. They are now getting strong for the upcoming rut when they will compete with other stags. The larger and older males are the strongest and they have to gain their strength to ensure their harem. For now, they will keep a close distance to the females. This landscape is filled with life, but with life comes death. The taunting silhouettes of the vultures are descending. These magnificent lords of the sky float gracefully from the high cliffs where they spend the night. The griffon is the most successful of the three species of vultures that inhabit the territory. They live and eat in groups and they can eat a whole deer in just a couple of hours. These animals are irreplaceable in their role in the wilderness they keep the landscape healthy, preventing diseases from spreading. And so their existence is crucial to the maintenance of a healthy ecosystem. The cork oak forest is home to all sorts of creatures, both large and small. All play their part. 
Wild rabbits are one of the most numerous species, and grouses have plenty of space to breed and find food. And if there are small preys, they usually are small predators, sometimes even smaller. The exodus from the agricultural areas in the last decades has left hundreds of abandoned houses in the rural areas. But as years pass by, nature has the tendency to take back what belongs to her, and the house is now home to a very curious little bird. Less than thirty centimeters high, the little owl is an ever-present hunter in open fields and rural areas. Now is the time to start getting concerned with the matters of conception. The sun is setting in the horizon, and the window of opportunity is narrow. The rhythm dictates that the mating season has arrived, and all must participate. Under the romantic mood set by the dusky sunset, there is a fleeting encounter, which, to ensure success, will be repeated many times for the next few days, and often necessary to ensure a clutch in spring. At this hour, the landscape is transformed. The long shadows merge with the darkness that is becoming, and while many are regrouping for the night, others already have ceased their hunting activities. When darkness sets in, we become strangers in a different world that suddenly emerges. It's in the dark that most of the forest mammals and amphibians are active. The night is their realm. While humans sleep, countless creatures awaken and take charge of the moonlit landscape that slowly appears. Among those who have spent the hours of daylight buried under the dirt. Protected from dehydration and the heat of the day, is the common toad. It has a highly sensitive skin, and only now it dares to come out and hunt. Amphibians are forever trapped between two worlds, depending highly on fresh water, and most of them bury themselves during the hours of sunlight. The same is true for one of the toad's favorite prey. The snail. The snail avoids dehydration by carrying an enclosed shell with perfect conditions inside it. The environment within the shell is like a minuscule primeval ocean. It provides hydration, shade, and protection from dry and hot places. As darkness deepens throughout the night, danger lurks silently behind every tree. The mystical Janet is an amazing hunter, and the hedgehog is as fatal as it is spiny. Using an array of extremely acute senses, mammals are perfect night predators. Adapted to hunt in the forest, and the most perfect night hunter is the rarely seen wildcat. The steppes of the deep inlands of the Alentejo are a delightful sight. 
the animals of the steppes, where sight can reach great distances, are focused on appearances. And during the mating season, the brightest are the fittest. Now is the time to guarantee the survival of the species, in some cases quite extremely so. The lesser kestrels are globally threatened of extinction. In Portugal, their numbers are increasing, mostly due to well-executed conservation programs related to their nesting sites. The vastness of the landscape invites all to come and share the life that is sprouting. This bizarre-looking creature is engaged in a very serious performance. It seems like it's trying to draw attention to itself. Quite successfully so. It is a male great bustard, and it is fulfilling its masculine duties in the season of love. It is displaying for the females that are around, and although there seems to be very few at the moment, the reward will be to contribute to the generation. So it must go on displaying. Only the largest and fittest males will succeed, and some can wait a couple of years before they have their chance. Those will have to wait for the next meeting season. The great bustard is the largest of the birds of the steppe. It is, in fact, the heaviest bird in Europe. Currently, most of the world's population resides in the Iberian Peninsula. Nevertheless, with human expansion ever present, their future is uncertain, and we can only hope that the conservation efforts continue for many years. Portugal has an amazing diversity of rivers from north to south, but none as imposing as its largest one, the Tagus. Fresh water is synonymous of life, and wading birds live, breed, and feed on it. Here they gather in big numbers, and closer to the river mouth is the reason why. Estuaries are one of the most important habitats for bird life, and this one is surely no exception. The Tagus is one of the most important places for migratory species, and all sorts of species are found here. Several small passerines undertake gigantic migrations, and most of them take advantage of the abundance of food available in the estuary. Most of these also use another stopping point, the last one before reaching Africa, yet another estuary on the very south of Portugal. The Ria Formosa. The shallow and warm waters of the Ria are full of nutrients and they hide endless forms most beautiful. These fantastic-looking creatures are a sight into another world. The long-snouted seahorse has its largest population right here and have been here for ages. They elegantly move despite the currents and filter the brackish waters for microscopic food particles. They are extremely sensitive to pollution, and in the last years, their population has been drastically decreasing. What reminds us once again that it is our duty to protect and promote conservation efforts to save the incredible wildlife that inhabits this place. The intricate relations of life here 
are not easy to discern, but there is one element that defines the difference between life and death, insects. These are mosquitoes in the millions. Here performing their mating flights, they have been reproducing here for generations and generations, providing the base for life at the surface. It's in these pine woods, a protected area right by the ocean, that we will find a very peculiar creature of the Algarve. With its prehistoric pace, this reptile is actually a very effective predator. The grace of its movements, combined with the fatal accuracy of its projected tongue, makes it the perfect killer. The chameleon arrived to the Algarve from North Africa. How it got here is still uncertain. It might have been here for as long as 200,000 years. Today, it is an iconic presence in the south coast and discreetly, it manages to keep surviving through the ages. At the end of the summer, when it senses a change in the weather, it knows well enough to hibernate and wait for the delights of the following spring. Its instincts are as wise as they are old. The winter in the Atlantic coast can be harsh. The temperature will not drop much, but the strong winds that hit the shore are relentless. The waves that hit the rocky length of the coast keep transforming the sea line from north to south in the never-ending encounter between land and sea. In this season, some decide to leave, some to come, and others just stay. The flora has adapted to these conditions and the maritime pines have no trouble in providing a safe shelter for those who can take advantage of it. A night predator, the long-eared owl, relies on camouflage to sleep during the day and it is pretty successful. It's not easy to spot one. This one is a female, and besides sleeping, she also has time for cleaning her feathers and regurgitating her previous meals, a very common behavior on all species of owls. Here, she is not alone. She had three chicks. They are less than a month old and are now eager to learn about what is outside the nest they are starting to explore the surrounding trees. The colder months are harsh, but Portugal's coast is stunning and sunlight is a constant. Wind does not mean rain and the clouds don't stay over the shore for long. They will clench the thirst of the plains further inland. So even at its peak, and more so towards the beginning of spring, is when many species of migratory birds choose to come here. Marine birds are used to the salt water and the roughed shores. But what is a white stork doing in a rocky cliff right by the Atlantic? 
there are more and more storks arriving in Portugal every year. They are an abundant species in the wetter lands of the interior. The southwest of Portugal has a large protected area and the storks find plenty of food only a few kilometers away. The cliffs offer a perfect spot for the stork's nest, away from land predators and close to a food source, not to mention the view. Early spring has again arrived. The storks are coupling for the season and they mark their nests with vibrant displays and loud sounds. The next few weeks will be very busy. There is a nest to rebuild. And even if it is not ready for the chicks, they will surely arrive nevertheless. Three baby storks. This mother will have a handful. The father will also contribute, but it is still a hard task for both of them. The chicks are always hungry, and there are few moments to rest. Being a maritime country, the islands of Portugal are a crucial part of the country's heritage. The closest of the islands, merely 10 kilometers away from the mainland, are the Berlengash, an important marine bird nesting sanctuary. They are a precious protected area of the country. Much further away towards the west, at around 14,000 kilometers, lie the amazing treasures of the Atlantic. True volcanic islands rising from the depths of the deepest of the oceans suddenly out of the blue. Long before mankind could be overwhelmed by its beauty, the shores of the Azores Islands had already been dominated by life in a completely overpowering manner. Slowly, small plants, trees and animals radically transformed the rocky island into a vibrant landscape filled with new evolved species and safekeeping a very special forest. The northeastern region of the biggest of the islands, São Miguel, offers a breathtaking scenery of green. The constant supply of fresh water carried by the clouds generates and maintains a dense and rich environment for all. And those who managed to arrive found unique conditions to survive. The great volcanoes that forge this island are no longer active and the peaceful craters are now fresh water reservoirs for the local plants and animals to survive on. But not only the locals come here. This bird was lost in its migration through the American continent. It is a little blue heron, and it is not supposed to be here. It happens quite often that lost birds find this lost world and enjoy its pleasures and abundance before getting the strength to travel back to their homes. The Macaronesian Islands, composed by the Azores, Madeira, Cape Verde and the Canary Islands, are the last place on Earth where we can find the relic forest that once occupied the south of Europe. In Madeira is where we can find the largest and best preserved area of laurel forest, a fact that led UNESCO to consider this forest a World Heritage Site in 1999. This prehistoric forest is old as dinosaurs and it already existed long before mankind. Its existence is a magical journey to the past and it is without any doubt the most precious treasure of the island of Madeira.
although it is on the island of Madeira that we can find it in its most splendid form. It is in São Miguel, Azores, that a very important relationship occurred. A small creature, a bird, migrated to the Azores thousands of years ago, and it followed a different evolutionary path from the species of the continent, becoming a completely different species. It has adapted perfectly to the laurel forest, and it is highly dependable on its existence. The Azorean bullfinch, an endemic form of São Miguel, it only lives here, in the Serra da Tronqueira, nowhere else in the planet. And that's one of the main reasons it was once in great danger of becoming extinct due to the ever-present clash with humans. It happened because of the destruction of its habitat and hunting when considered a plague. Fortunately now, after great conservation efforts, it is coming back and it may have a chance of surviving the encounter. The islands are the only elevation of the sea floor in a great area. So, under the water, a whole new world exists. A rich and diverse ecosystem, both for the ones that live here permanently and for the ones who are passing by. Every minute spent here is a minute of discovery. The resident species have a supply of food brought incessantly by the Gulf current and can explode in a diversity of forms and colors that is usually related to tropical seas. The coast of the different islands of the Azores is a precious marine habitat for countless species of marine life that find many opportunities to find shelter and food. But the big blue is just ahead and it too can be amazing. It is a world of gentle giants. The blue sharks know these waters like few others. The deep blue is their home and it has been so for a long time. And for the time being, we can still appreciate their majesty. They have been coming through here for millions of years playing an important part in the balance of the ecosystem. With millions of sharks being killed every year to supply the demand of the Asian market for shark fin, it's important that the Azores continue to be a safe place for sharks to roam. Forms, colors, and singularities are endless, and some even seem to defy the laws of motion. Through the constant migrations, the giant manta rays are the most graceful of ocean creatures. They seem to fly effortlessly in a constant journey through the ocean. They come here in great numbers, a pilgrimage to resilience in a now hostile world. Hoping they will continue their journey through to the Azores waters for many years, we end our journey through Portugal's wonderful 
and unique nature and wildlife.